So I'm uh, going to introduce the, the next guest coming up. Uh, we have Vivian Zhu from Starcom uh, Managing Director China. And we have Joshua Ma, founder and CEO of Madhouse, which is one of the leading mobile marketing agencies in China. And do we have Ethan? I, I understand that Ethan is not yet with us, okay. Normandy. Uh, yeah, he has some flight delays. Uh, so if he does join us midway, uh, please bring him up and we'll, we'll add him in. Okay, so we're talking about mobile, and you're both uh, experts here. So let me just kind of set the stage. Uh, there are over 600 million smartphones now in China. Um, that's a, a very large number, and China is um, soon to be the second biggest mobile internet advertising market, um, overtaking Japan. Uh, if it hasn't already in the last you know, few moments we've been sitting here, it will be soon. And much of that spending is going into Baidu and Alibaba. This is very much about search and shopping going forward. So, you know, Vivian, let's start with you. It's, you know, do you agree that mobile is increasingly important for your clients? And, you know, can you give us some examples of how they're using it? And are they shifting budget uh, from other types of media into mobile, or are they just spending more overall? Yeah. Um, thank you, uh, Normandy. So I think mobile is... Um disruptive to our industry, right? But on the disruption, on the side of disruption, it's a huge opportunity because it's a very intimate platform. And uh, on this platform, for the first time ever, I think brand can really build a super intimate relationship with their consumers. I think it posed a lot of challenge. In China, you know, um, as the previous panelists also mentioned, post-90s, post-80s are the driving forces behind the usage of mobile. And uh, as marketers, we truly need to understand what is the, the best way to really enliven the brand experience and storytelling on this platform? Uh, in China, I think, um, so for brand, the challenge is how do you play on this super intimate platform where you want to build a close relationship, but very easily, if you don't do it right, you can easily alienate the consumers as well. So it's a sword with double edge. Um, so um, from budgeting perspective, we know the mobile advertising spending seriously lagging behind the time of consumer spending on mobile platform, right? For mobile, I think true in China, but also in the rest of the markets, it's definitely for screen in terms of timing uh, spend. Uh, we know there are some statistics about Chinese consumers check their WeChat uh, every six minutes during the whole day, and they check the mobile phone 120 times per day. So if you add up all those fragments of time, it's a super powerful engaging platform. So all our clients are thinking, sure, we need to solve for mobile, but how much budget we should put there? That's a universal question. And I see definitely the mobile spending from our clients grows three or four times over last year. But we know, you know that's still not fast enough. Uh, so we're still trying to solve you know, what's the best way. Um, also, I see shift uh, from budget from traditional to mobile, from print. But there's an important phenomenon in China, I think also in the rest of markets, it's a huge opportunity for mobile to interact with, with computer, with TV. So from that perspective, I think traditional media is not going to disappear just because of the surge of mobile. I think the opportunity for multi-screen interaction is going to pose you know, opportunities for, for more growth. One example is in the recent Chinese New Year gala event. It's a huge TV event for the Chinese consumers. Um, I think Alibaba and WeChat Tencent is behind this because they want more consumers to use mobile payment. So they put in a mechanism where if you shake your phone during that Chinese New Year gala, you can get red packet. So you can get cash, basically. So on that one evening within five hours, there are 11 billion shakes. Uh, that's how many consumers are engaging with their mobile phone, you know, trying to get the, get the red packet. Then, of course, that requires them to download uh, the mobile payment apps. So we see this explosive phenomenon happening there. Um, the key is, you know, how do we tell a truly uh, interactive branding story on this platform? I know my answer is getting very long. Um, so one example I want to give is about uh, Wrigley, our client, with a double mint brand. So with our partnership with Tencent, you know, we get some first trial opportunity on WeChat. There were two features with the first brand to use. One is use your WeChat, you can scan not a QR code, but the product itself. Uh, you can scan, this will take you to an HTML5 page. The second is we can actually customize, uh, customize some WeChat emojis for Wrigley. So you can put, download, the users can download this emoji. So there's two things, but the question is how do we do that, right? As a, as, as a brand, uh, we don't want to just you know, offer the features to the consumers. 
So we reflect back on the overall brand story is really is about connecting people. Because you know, with, with Double Mean, you got you know, fresher breath, you are more confident when you talk to people in, in, intimately. So that's the brand spirit. So with that, you know, we designed a campaign to say, OK, when you scan your Wrigley packet, this Double Mint uh, packet, you can get extra 40 uh, gig of uh, Wi-Fi you know, um, so that you can connect with your friends, even if you are not in the Wi-Fi environment. So it's a very simple uh, user experience there. You scan, you get extra you know, capacity of Wi-Fi, then you can send the WeChat emoji to your friends or to your loved ones. So this simple idea, end of the day, got 2 million uh, people downloading this Wi-Fi and send also the, the emoji um, which, through their WeChat and also drive a lot of you know, O2O in-store in purchase because people heard about this. They went out of the way to buy a double mint packet. So it's a very interesting overall brand experience. And spending in mobile marketing has risen 276% uh, in 2014 over the previous year to over 7 billion US, according to eMarketer, who's in the audience here. So, um, you know, Josh, can you talk about how, you know, have you, this presumably is great news for your company because you're taking advantage of this rise in mobile. Some examples of, of how marketers are using uh, mobile marketing in the phone. As Vivian said, it's a very personal device. So you can, you can have very uh, personalized interactions. Yeah, definitely. Um, what we have been seeing is uh, that the, I think the key trends this year will be, you know, as you mentioned, uh, when the year that we founded my house, we didn't see that, we didn't know that mobile will be the number one, you know, the S band will be on uh, mobile will be bigger than internet pretty soon, you know. Uh, so from uh, I think the early years, you know, brand marketers like oh, we got a big budget, so let's try mobile a bit, right? As long as it's not SMS spamming. Later on, pretty soon they switch their mentality to um, uh, mobile as a center, mobile now. We, we start to think mobile. Then later on, it's mobile first. Everything you know. Every marketing plan, there's definitely a, a mobile element there. And pretty soon it be, be become the center of the communication plan. And now I think it's mobile most. Uh, so I, I, I think in UK, uh, USA, by end of next year, mobile ad spending will be bigger than internet already. And for the rest of the world, it's another one or two years behind that. So uh, back to your question. From brand advertiser, I think um, a few years back, every every uh, brand advertiser in China they do social, they do video. You have to do it, right? And mobile apps. Everyone building mobile apps. But right now they learn a lot, experience uh, with us a lot. So right now they they take a lot more practical theory behind this. I really um, think that mobile is a center part of their marketing mix. For example, uh, the, the, the case that uh, Vivian mentioned, the CTV program together with the mobile phone. So together, that can create that phenomenon uh, 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 movement in China. 11 billion engagement in five hours. So only mobile can, can do that. And TV, uh, still quite influential. However, right now TV, even, even in China, they need mobile to sustain them to become interactive. I think, I think that's, the, that's the thing that most of the brand advertisers, they already in their mind. So uh, from two years back, I think they are very seriously focusing on mobile. And not, not only see mobile as a new media for you to, for the brand to engage with users, or a, a new touch point, but uh, it's, a, it's a central part of the marketing mix. Uh, mobile not only a new media, but can, um, activate or in, make other traditional media become interactive. Mm -hmm. I think they, they, they know that pretty well already. You mentioned uh, the rise in branded apps, but uh, as I understand it, one of the real challenges in China is how many app stores there are. Uh, that you can't, it, in, the, in the West, a lot of people use iTunes, and you can develop one app for iTunes, and that will work with a lot of people. But in China, there's something like 30 or 40 app stores, and there has to be a lot of customization. And in the past, that was an issue. From talking to your colleagues like Dan when he was there, is that still an issue? It's never been a, the, an issue at all. Really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the issue is Google Play doesn't work. That's it, right? But okay. getting, 
get an Android app to your phone is easy, probably easier. Okay. It's so, direct from the server. But there are, there's more than one app store, I think. Yeah, right? but you don't have to download a brand app from a okay. particular app store, okay. right? It's just Mayhouse okay. or your, your partner on mobile will set up the download server okay. anywhere. Okay. You just click the ad, download Android app. So okay. it's not an issue. Okay. So what about online video? We were talking earlier that that's really a, a rising area. So how are brands using uh, video on their phones? Is it just you know basic pre-rolls or are they getting involved in the content? You know, UGC, things like that? Yeah. yeah, I think for now, um, of course, on, on, the, on the video front, overall, the spending will definitely go up because the OTV, you know, including mobile or PC, is still a huge opportunity for, for, the, for the Chinese brands. Um, on mobile side, I think for now, they're still focused on, for example, pre-roll and also individual viral videos. But we think UGC will take a very, very um, uh, high growth because of the 3G and the 4G and the prevalence of this connection speed going down to the lower tier market. So um, for, for, for now, you know, on mobile platform, people still, you know, the, the top things they do is purchase, right, commerce, then it's beauty view. And then it's the gaming. So this is the top three. Mm -hmm. And then everything else, like uh, you know, search for through through maps, you know, all those utility based is you know is, is other 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 function where they spend time on. Mm -hmm. So we, we do believe UGC driven by Weishi, which is like the short format video, um, and and all sort of you can you can take a short video, beautify it, and upload on your social platforms. All those behavior will will increase um, the, the advertising spending also in that area. Okay. You've talked about marketers going down into tier three and tier four. Mm -hmm. uh, we have this, you know, 600 million plus smartphones in China. Uh, how many of those are really connected to 3G and 4G mm -hmm. uh, packages that really allow, you know, the, the, the phones to be used for, for mobile marketing? Are, are you seeing that happening also? Can they afford it when you get down to tier three and tier four? No, the, from... from um, from my experience living and working in China, I start not tracking, not following those number and percentage anymore. I, I, I don't think that's as important and relevant because the, the really the race of mobile uh, is really on Wi-Fi, not really 3G or 4G, because it's quite easy to, uh, the most, uh, the user in China using mobile internet most frequently is at home and office, why? Because free Wi-Fi. And later on, uh, uh, only on the go, they probably use like, you know, the, 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 the data access from the mobile carriers, right? A lot of hotel, a lot of coffee shop all offer free Wi-Fi. Especially there are a lot of apps, free Wi-Fi finders, so people utilize that a lot. So I think when you consume, uh, especially video or download apps, I think majority, super majority, majority of the Chinese audience will do Wi-Fi. Yeah. And you can have that. See, we have free Wi-Fi here as well, right? So that's where you, you're going to consume video, not really on 3G. It's still quite expensive, I think, compared with other markets and countries. Yeah. Okay. Also, just quickly, it's amazing how, especially in the post-90s, really, really make sure themselves, you know, have a smartphone, have a good data plan, all stay yes. connected. They can, they go all the way. There were some, you know, horrible stories of even young kids trying to, you know, you know, do whatever, you know, even sell organ trying to get a smartphone, which is really sad. Um, but that just shows the desperation or the, you know, they think to live a connected life is so important. Um, so that's why mobile is, is such a, you know, powerful platform. And uh, quite a few marketers, like Vivian just mentioned, Double Mint, they offer 50 megabyte free, right? Data plan. Just Once like you participate. Yeah. So it's not only one. Like I think Alibaba and Taobao, they offer that as well. A lot of video portals and apps, they offer that. They're working with carriers as well. If you do this, free data. Data frees on me. Mm -hmm. I have a program a lot. Okay. One of the, the kind of fun things about watching China over the past few years is in the early days, it was a lot of, there was a lot of talk about the Western sites versus the Chinese sites. You had uh, eBay versus Alibaba and Baidu versus Google. And in nearly all of these cases, the, the local Chinese companies, you know, really have dominated for various reasons. But what's kind of fun now is that they're, they were in very separate areas with Baidu and search, Alibaba and shopping, uh, Tencent and social. But but increasingly, and largely because of the phone becoming a device for search and for shopping, 
they're all moving into very competing areas. And I just wonder, looking forward, if there are sort of you know trends you see in terms of you know who do you who are you going to be betting on in the future? I mean, I hear a lot of people saying that shopping is going to come down to to ten cent versus Alibaba. You know, Alibaba's competition isn't necessarily other e-commerce sites. It's ten cent because WeChat now has uh, a payment, you know, the, the wallet functionality, and you can shop through WeChat. So I just wondered if, if you're watching these trends and, and who would you bet on in the future? Yeah, it's still pretty much a Let's final between BAT, <laughs> right? Um, um, so I think Tencent, WeChat definitely, I believe these platforms still have a huge potential because it is, it is the most engaging and largest social platform. And, has and it's scale. not only WeChat plus WeChat plus QQ. QQ, so. exactly. Yeah. So they reach hundreds of millions of people exactly. like Alibaba. They're one of the companies that really can compete on scale. Yeah. And also WeChat now is seriously getting you know, e-commerce space. You can build your own stores, right? A lot of brands are already doing that, but it's just only the you know, a surface because, you know, end of the day, shopping is going to be a brand experience. And on WeChat, as they connect, as Tencent is connecting more to an O2O offering, um, co connect closer to the community, like through acquisition of 58point.com. So they're going to occupy a larger, very, very unique um, community-based, service-driven, you know, connected to e-commerce shopping kind of business model, which Alibaba do not necessarily have. Um, so Alibaba never really cracked the code of social, right? That's the area they, they really want to get into. So we're going to continue to see this, you know, giants fight it out. And Baidu, kind of on the side, we, you know, there's another number, not only mobile search is increasing. The search on, on Tmall, on e-commerce, is actually now account for 50% of overall search. So the traditional dominant by Baidu on the search space is already broken up. So you see all these you know, giants uh, occupying different uh, backgrounds. But at the same time, I think there are still opportunity for niche players to get in big. There are new things that are still coming out, right? There are, there are, there are, social, there are mobile uh, sites like Momo, which is actually popular. We talk about this dating app, very popular in China. Uh, there are new social platform, purely mobile-based, called Nice. Right? Um, so it's almost like Instagram plus Pinterest. So these are attracting a lot of attention time of younger users. So I think we'll, we'll continue to see more innovation, more new players coming into, into the space as well. Joshua, are there some favorite apps you want to, she's identified a couple like MoMA, are there some apps that you've seen that you think marketers should really be paying attention to? I think with, uh, by working with my house, I don't think that that would be the <laughs> situation. Uh, I would like to answer the first question, okay. the BAT thing. Uh, I know it might sound uh, a bit political, but I think really they have their own strengths, different strengths, as you mentioned, search, social, and commerce. But really, uh, from the bottom of my heart, I really think that they should just merge together and conquer USA. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Should we end on that note? We, we've got about 18 seconds left. If there's one final question, we can maybe ask them to give us a minute or two extra. Any questions? Okay. If not, um, thank you very much, uh, Vivian and Josh. And I'm sorry we missed Ethan, but uh, maybe we'll, we'll have him later today, so hopefully you can grab him during a coffee break. <laughs> Great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, we heard from Vivian Zhu from SMG China, Joshua Ma from Madhouse. And we're